Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to episode 77 on the Healthy Runner podcast. And we are live within the Healthy Runner Facebook group talking about fueling and hydration for summer races with registered dietitian Kayla Slater. Kayla is an online online plant-based registered dietitian nutritionist and run coach and founder founding owner of plant-based performance nutrition and run coaching. Welcome to the show, Kayla. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm super excited that you're here today because it is like perfect timing with it's going to be summer solstice next week, right? So it's officially summer mm -hmm. next week, but in many parts of the country, we've already started getting some really warm weather and it's really hit runners hard for these long runs oh, and yeah. running in the heat, <laughs> running in the humidity. And I think the tips that you're going to be able to share uh, today with our healthy runner community are going to be super helpful to help get us through the dog days of summer. And <laughs> especially with so many live races happening in the summer that were postponed yeah. from the spring due to COVID. So I know here locally in Connecticut, kind of our big local half marathon, the Cheshire half marathon, uh, that we have a training group, uh, working in our team healthy runner program, uh, for is July 18th. And it's normally Ooh, the end of <laughs> April. Exactly. It's normally the end of April. So normally this race, it's like 50 something degrees, uh, when you sign up for the Cheshire half and who knows, it could be 90 degrees in July. So mm -hmm. I'm, I figured this was a topic that many runners, especially, I know like you're used to this weather because you're down in Florida, <laughs> but we'll us, in, to it. <laughs> us in the Northeast here, um, we're not used to this weather. So I think this is going to be super helpful. So guys, what Kayla is going to talk about is really fueling and hydration for your summer race and answer some common questions such as, why do we need to pay extra attention to our fueling and hydration when the temperature rises? Why should runners use as what should runners use as a gauge if they need to alter their typical long run hydration plan for race day? How much water do you lose with running? Yes, you do lose water with running. Um, is there a way to measure how much sweat that we go that we have when we run is there a sweat rate calculator like we have these pace calculators um i've heard some information on this but honestly i want a little bit more clarity from you um and then what are your go-to recommendations for what to eat before running a race or a long run and then what electrolytes do you need when running um, how much electrolytes do runners need and then we can get into your niche and specialty of like, what are the best <laughs> source of plant-based protein that we can have for us plant-based runners um, after our run. So for those of you who are here on the Healthy Runner uh, Facebook live stream, can you guys do me a favor and just type in live into the comment box. I'm going to see who's here. Um, and if you're watching the replay, do me a favor and just type in replay. And I know you, so I know you caught it and give you a little shout out. Um, and then the first thing before we kind of get started is we have a bunch of other resources for those that are tuning in for the first time. We've had a lot of community members, um, recently, and we've had some previous episodes similar to this topic, not the same topic, but I also want to reference you. If you're interested in this topic to check out episode 28, we had, you can on the show who really talked about how to avoid hitting the wall. Um, episode 27, we had actually an ex-meteorologist, uh, Stephanie Blosey, who owns Fleet Beat in West Hartford here in Connecticut, uh, who talked about really specifically training in the summer and how to prepare to run in hot weather. So she really got into like the details of dew point and like that's the variable you want to look at on your weather app. So if you haven't checked out episode 27, check that one out. And then related to nutrition and hydration, we've also had episode 53, what should you eat and drink before your long runs with the registered dietitian, uh, Jen Giles. And then also our friend Claire Botholic from the Run to the Top podcast was on in episode 67 to talk about plant-based running. Um, so if you're interested in this topic, I'm sure you would be interested in some of those previous episodes that you can get on the Healthy Runner podcast. So Kayla, let's get started. We're going to get started with a little dynamic warm up 
right? So I'm sure yeah. you do a little dynamic warm up before your run. So this is yeah. the first question we ask all our guests. So tell us, uh, where are you from and what do you do? Yeah. So I am from, well, I originally from New York and I now am in Florida. Where in New York, and, by the way? Oh, upst- upstate New York, central New upstate. York. So Syracuse, okay. Albany area. Okay. I'm originally from Long Island. So okay. some people yeah. don't even consider that New York. It's like its own state, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. So upstate New York, yes. near kind so of Syracuse area. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, and I'm now in Florida and I am a dietitian. So I'm an online plant-based dietitian, nutrition and run coach. So I mostly work with plant-based runners. Awesome. Awesome. And how long have you been a registered dietitian? Five, five years. I have to recertify awesome. this year. <laughs> nice. Did you always work awesome. exclusively with runners or did you kind of like work in a hospital-based setting initially or kind of a clinic? Yes. I've done all sorts of things. I've done clinical in the hospital, acute care, and I've also done community nutrition, which was more nutrition education, like group education in the community. Nice. Nice. So yeah, you've definitely found your, your niche, uh, Mm -hmm. earlier in your career than I did for sure, because I was kind of like hospital based outpatient physical therapy, um, for like 12 years. And then like a private practice kind of setting, uh, physical therapy for three years before opening up my clinic and then my kind of run coaching business. Um, so Yeah. yeah, I am, like super impressed that you have yeah. found your niche and kind of probably what brings you the most satisfaction, right? Like working with yes. your peeps, right? Cause you're a runner yourself. Yes. yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so how long have you been running? I've been running for probably 10, I think like 10 years or so I've been running since high school. So I ran in cross country high school and one year of college. Wow. Nice. So yeah, you are definitely more of an accomplished runner than I am. I've been running 10 years as well, but in case you haven't tell from the grays, it is not (laughs) since high school, right? So I started running in my thirties. Um, so yeah, you've been running about 10 years now. Awesome. And I think what is your favorite, um, kind of race distance to train for? Ooh, I would say the half marathon is probably my favorite. Right now, I've been more focused on the marathon just because I really want to make Boston, (laughs) just really want to go to Boston and, you know, just be able to do it. Um, But I would say really my favorite is the half marathon. Actually, one year, my mom's also a runner, and that's how I got started running. We ran a half marathon every single month and like, you know, all over, we travel all over the place. I don't think we've done one in every state, but we've thought about it. Um, but that was a really fun year to just do a half marathon. Um, but I think I like it the most distance because I like endurance and I'm not really quick and I'm not really fast. I'm working on that now, but I've always had that endurance, but half marathon doesn't feel like the training is as, as bad, I guess, <laughs> as the marathon. Cause right now I'm in marathon training and especially with the hot and like, we're going to be talking about training in the summertime. Um, cause I'll be doing a fall marathon. It's, it's tough. Get those long runs in when it's hot. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I actually just saw you posted. I think you ran 20 this weekend, right? I did. Yes. The last nice. long run before my marath- spring mar- yeah, marathon, which actually did get postponed as well. It was supposed to be end of May. So we'll see it's back up in New York, but it still could be hot in June. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So you're coming back up, uh, up North here to yes. New York to run it. Cool. Yes. My hope was awesome. it was going to be cooler, but that might not work out. <laughs> we'll yeah. <see. laughs> oh my goodness. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, you got the hardest one, right? You got through your peak week, um, yes. in your training. So now it's all like taper and you just gotta, oh, no. you know, get through the taper crazies and not yes. do too much <laughs> these next exactly. two or three weeks. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so let me just yeah. give a little shout out to our friends who are hopping on here. Nivian's here on the live. Javier, thank you so much for joining. Kathleen's here. Uh, Teresa's here on the live. I'm glad you're catching this, Teresa. Um, 
Aubrey's here. Melissa's here. Anne is here. What's going on, Anne? Ruth is here. Uh, Melissa Pittman from upstate New York is here too. Uh, she's Woo! from the Corning uh, region. So shout oh, out nice. to upstate New Yorkers. <laughs> Um, Brian's here. What's going on? Coach Lou is here. Um, Annie is here. Annie, so good to run with you yesterday during our long run. Uh, Roger, thank you so much for joining. And um, yeah, Melissa says it's hot here in New York. Um, so <laughs> as we're going on today, guys, if you have any, any nutrition, hydration questions, I've already cleared it with Kayla. Um, she's good to field mm -hmm. any of your questions. So this is your opportunity to ask anything that um, either we're not covering or you, if you have follow-up questions to what I asked Kayla, then go ahead and drop them in the comment box. I'll monitor that. I'll do my best to get to all of your questions before we are done today. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into this, Kayla. So first question I have for you is why do we need to pay extra attention to what we put on our bodies, what we fuel with, and what do we hydrate with when the temperature or dew point humidity rises? Mm -hmm. Well, one is to prevent heat exhaustion or heat stroke, which is definitely can happen when the weather and humidity is very hot. Um, and it also can affect your performance. So if you're running for performance and really trying to, you know, run a certain time, then that can really, really affect it. And I know runners can get really disappointed. And I always, you know, really try to explain, you know, that what happens, you know, when it's hot and we do need to right compensate for that. Um, but definitely hydration. I've even personally experienced this. It can sometimes make or break like a long training run or even a race. Um, if you're just not fueling or hydrating, right. Especially when it's hot. Yeah. So from what I heard from that is number one, safety, <laughs> right? So yeah. we definitely don't want, I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely been at races where people are dropping like flies, right? They're like passed out on the side. There's like EMTs tending to them. Uh, here in Connecticut, it's like notorious for our like Labor Day road race uh, here in New Haven. It's a big one. And that one, for some reason, is like, it seems like every other year, it's hot, hazy, humid. And there are just people dropping like flies. And that is definitely one race that I've done the half and the 20 K um, a bunch of times where I've literally like at mile eight said, all right, like I've literally taken out my phone, called my wife. And it's like, I'm not going to be at the finish line when I normally am. I'm going to be coasting this one in because I don't feel like seeing you at Yale New Haven hospital. Um, yeah. So, you know, there are just some times where, you know, you see runners just having that, like heat exhaustion or, you know, dangerous wise, like heat stroke. And I guess, you know, we should mention that for those runners who, you know, like to push themselves and, you know, you might have the mentality like no pain, no gain. And it's like, oh, I just need to let my body acclimate to the heat. You know, a, a huge, huge, huge warning sign is if you stop sweating. Um, that is danger, danger, danger. You need to stop running and cool yourself down. Um, with ice, get into air conditioning, um, because that is a medical emergency. Um, so make sure that your body does not stop sweating, um, because now it's gone into overdrive. You know, sweating is one of those things that it's the way for our bodies to cool itself, right, from a kind of temperature regulation standpoint. So I guess I, I need to mention that since we are the Healthy Runner podcast, and <laughs> we want to make sure that we... Uh, we uh, make that note just in case runners didn't know. Um, so safety wise, you're saying, and then also it's important during the heat because of performance wise, right? Yeah. So it's going to help right. our performance, which who in the heck doesn't want to perform better? Who doesn't want to run faster? Who doesn't want to hit a PR, mm -hmm. PB, whatever you call it, wherever you are in the world. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Got it. Yes. So now what should runners use um, as a gauge to determine if they need to kind of alter their typical long run hydration plan for race day, right? So like you, you just yeah. ran 20, like mm -hmm. we're half marathon training. Like I ran 12 yesterday. Um, I have a typical long run strategy, right. That I've been mm -hmm. hydrating with. So mm -hmm. what should we use to gauge if we need to alter that for like race day? Hmm. Well, one thing is the sweat test, but it's also kind of hard to figure out because it has a lot to do with the weather. So a lot of times it's really hard to kind of figure out what exactly you need to author, 
But a good rule of, or a good rule of thumb that you could do is do the SWAT test, you know, on one of your runs that are longer than an hour and at least kind of see if your hydration is where it should be or if you kind of need to change something up. Um, but on race day too, you know, you could compare it to one of your other runs and be like, okay, I know it's going to be a little hotter. Maybe I need to drink bar electrolytes or maybe have an extra salt pill or something like that. Okay. So Kayla, I, I feel like I am pretty educated in running and I have a <laughs> bunch of degrees and, but honestly, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't even know the exact details of the sweat test. And I'm sure there are many runners who are listening to this right now and have no clue what the sweat test is. So can yes. you please break that down for us? Like simple-minded folks, what yes. is the sweat test? Sure. I will do my best. Um, and I actually just did this for a client as well. So the sweat test is measuring your, so measuring your body weight before your run without your clothes on. And after your run, you weigh yourself again after your run and you look at the percentage of change of your body, your body weight. So you have to subtract the amount of fluids that you did drink during your run. And then we kind of figure out how much how much you, based on how much you sweat, you can figure out how much fluid you've lost. So based on that, so what that means is, or what the recommendation is, is to replace 16 ounces of fluid for every pound that you lose. Okay. So let's try to put this in a practical scenario. So <laughs> let's say I weigh before my run, Yes. Like, I don't know, let's, I'm not good at math, by the way. So this is going to be pretty funny, but <laughs> let's just say, um, so I'm 185, right? Before yes. my run. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying, I'm going to weigh myself after my run. So let's just say it went yes. down to 180. Okay. So that's a five pound a five difference. Pound loss. Yep. And then I would subtract how, how much fluids I drank during that run in ounces. Yes. So, well, it might be make sense to actually do it first, like how okay. many ounce, figure out how many ounces that is and then subtract the ounces that you had. Okay. And you said, what is the recommendation at, so, for every pound? How many ounces? It's 16 do, ounces. So 16 ounces loss. for it's every pound loss. So technically 16 times five, times five I should have <laughs> drank, right? Yes. So should the number be like equal? Is that the goal? Like before your rate or an after or no, it's well, normal the to have. The goal is to not lose any weight because okay, if your hydration so is, the goal. is on point. Yeah. So if, you're, okay. if your hydration is on point, you're doing it correctly, then you should not lose body weight because you're replacing that fluid during your run. So if afterwards, you know, you've lost five pounds and you're like, oh shoot, I did not drink enough during that run. So afterwards you have to replenish, but ideally you want to replenish fluids during because you'll feel better. <laughs> okay. So that's good to know, because honestly, I didn't even know that. Um, so yeah. guys, if you're listening, you should not be losing any weight at all um, from before and after your long runs. So I guess the simple thing is to right now, literally start to weigh yourself without your clothes before. And then same thing, obviously, without after, because I know for me on these long, sweaty runs, right, your clothes probably weigh like five pounds yes. because that's how much you sweat it out, right? They're all heavy. They're like yes. hanging off you. Um, I can't even get my clothes off. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so what? <laughs> um so make sure that that number isn't changing. I've never actually done this. So I'm interested in this. I'm going to try this out and I'm going to have to report back to everyone um, yes, and definitely. see if you have lost any weight. If so, that means yeah. you're not hydrating enough, essentially, is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. So okay. They should be hydrating before, during and after. Okay. Um, yes. All right. Most runners do not. <laughs> now, is there a normal, like normal amount of water a person loses when they run? Like, is there any, like, I don't know, numbers or standards or percentages, something like that? Yeah, no, it really depends. It really depends on the person, their body weight and just how much they sweat and the weather, you know, the, the temperature as well as the humidity and the dew point and all of that takes into fact. 
And then also the intensity of your run, the pace of your run, right? All of that. Okay. So obviously for those getting ready for a race, especially like there are a lot of like first time marathoners that I know I'm working with. And especially for the marathon, like you mentioned, it is a different beast, (laughs) right? Like I always say that the marathon is not like just doubling the half marathon in terms of your training and in terms of the the grit you need. Um, And actually our guest in the last episode, Paul really did a nice job of talking about some mental tips on how we overcome the marathon itself, because you really need those strategies to get you through that (laughs) 26.2. So for those that haven't checked out that episode, check out that one as well. uh, Episode 76. And you know, I think of it as almost like three X, right? Like, or four X the half marathon. And I've only run one myself, um, run like 25 half marathons, but only one full. And, you know, one day when I get some uh, time freedom back, I will definitely uh, (laughs) take on the training because the training is, you know, that's the thing, right? Is the amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. All right. So that you pretty much covered how we, you know, calculate right sweat so that it's Mm -hmm. the sweat test it's called and that's how we calculate like how much sweat we're losing during Mm -hmm. our runs and then we can take our weight before take our weight after and be able to look at the difference if there's a difference that means you actually didn't hydrate enough um during your run yes okay Awesome. Thank you for that clarification Mm -hmm. because honestly I I've heard about it here and there and I honestly never really made the effort to learn more about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We could thank one of my clients because we just went through it. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Um, Okay. Yeah. So Ruth says for the sweat test, do you weigh yourself before or after breakfast? Hmm. So I guess, so her question is if she goes for a run after breakfast, would you, I would assume you would weigh after you eat right before you run. Yes. Yes. I would imagine yeah. it's probably like as yeah. close to you oh, yeah. go yeah. out yeah. for your run as possible, right? Right. Right. Okay. Or, that I would mean, make sense to me because we're yeah. measuring how much you're sweating during your run. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And her in your weight, you know, if you're sensitive with weight issues, it could, you know, just be aware of that because your weight, of course, after you eat is not going to be the same as a weight right in the morning but we're just using that as a measurement to figure out fluid loss. Okay. All right. Nice. Yeah. See my like experimental design brain research brain went into play. It was like pre-test post-test, <laughs> like when to do it. Um, okay. Yeah. And then Anne also has a question of when you get to the point of nausea and dizziness, is it better to drink water or electrolytes um, or take in salt? Mm. And I know we're kind of, kind of get into electrolytes, but I don't know if, um, you can answer Anne's question. Um, so she's saying like, when you get to the point of nausea and dizziness, what is the best, uh, recommendation at that point? Do we need to take in more water? Do we need to take in more electrolytes? Do we need to take in just salt? Do you happen to know the answer to that? Yeah. So I do, because I do remember this happening to me as well in a race. It was 90 degrees in Nashville, ran a half marathon and had heat exhaustion, Um, dizziness, nausea. And I remember he just made sure to cool my body down, like you said, just with ice, with a cold washcloth. Didn't really give me much water electrolytes. It's kind of already too late by then. Um, you can a little bit and sip a little bit, you know, eventually once your body cools down, but the, I guess the biggest, most important thing is by that point, don't worry as much about getting the fluids in. It's more of just cooling that body down really quickly as fast as possible. So you don't go into the heat stroke. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Yeah. Luckily I've only been there like once, actually twice myself in a summer 5k and a hot Mm -hmm. 10k. And it was pretty much when I finished that I got to that point where a little dazed and confused where you're like, (laughs) you know, not knowing where you are and, um, you know, needing to get cooled down. Um, So, and yeah, hopefully you're not pushing yourself that hard during your race and you're not feeling those symptoms during your race. Um, And hopefully it's more at the end. Um, So if you're getting to that point, I guess my question to you, Anne, would be, you know, are you hydrating enough? 
before your run, during your run, um, up until that point um, to try to prevent yourself from getting to that point, right? Because Mm -hmm. you don't want to be in that heat exhaustion phase and then that progress to heat stroke, obviously. Um, And you are a nurse, so you definitely know that. (laughs) Um, All right. So, yeah. And so, and uh, (laughs) so Anne is saying that, uh, so she does ultras and this happens (laughs) uh, when she is doing ultras. So it would, I've, never done an ultra and I would love to hear from others. I don't know if there's anyone else who, um, is here on the live that does ultras as well. Um, and if that is something that you normally experience, um, I don't know a whole lot about ultras. I don't know if you do Kayla. A little bit. There's a lot of, a lot of plant-based runners are ultra marathoners, but I do know it's, it can be very, it's a dangerous (laughs) <laughs> once you get to ultra levels i don't know if you heard about the big um actually i think it got really cold forgot where it was the, uh, and if anyone's into ultra running and follow the news and stuff they might know but um there was a lot of runners that actually died from the the weather changing and it got really really cold to kind of the opposite of the heat but it's the same thing what can happen with heat and just stuck out there and they couldn't save them so was, that was pretty sad, but yeah, that's definitely can get, can get dangerous out there with, with ultra running. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so guys, if you're listening to this, make sure you're safe. Right. Um, and I think that's the other point too, that we should probably highlight, um, with us being like healthcare providers is, um, you know, summertime and hot races to begin with aren't, aren't the best time for you to try to shoot to get a personal best and to get a PR or PB, um, you know, you really do need to, you know, consider your safety and your health when you are running these races in these conditions, because physiologically it definitely affects your body, you know, totally differently. Um, and it's, it's a matter of, you know, just being smart when you're out there. Like I was, you know, I mentioned my story at New Haven road race, you know, and just seeing like all the people dropping like flies. And I started feeling, you know, like that way and that you were talking about, and I'm like, you know what, I don't feel like going to the hospital today. Um, Mm -hmm. I put in a lot of hard training. I'll finish the race. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's not going to be a time that I'm going to be like super proud about, but you know what, there'll always be another race, right? So if you're listening to this and your race is coming up and the weather forecast is looking really hot, really humid, hazy, high dew point, um, you know, go into the, with the mindset of, you know, you'll do your best considering the conditions, but your time should be slower than you would normally, you know, run that race distance. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into, um, so we talked about sweat, we talked about hydration. Um, what are your recommendations, obviously with you being a dietitian and nutritionist, um, what are your recommendations for what to eat before running a race or a long run? Ooh, what to eat? So, yes. So I always recommend if it's a shorter run, having something like a piece of fruit or, you know, just something real, you know, small, quick, um, low fiber, nothing, you know, high in fat either. Um, And then before a longer run, you do, you want to make sure to focus on carbohydrates again, low fiber, but you do want to wait enough time for your body to digest. Um, so I always recommend like two to four hours is ideal, you know, to have oatmeal or bagel or something before, before a longer run. Okay. So if you're out there for two to four hours, have basically more of like a complex carb, um, that's Mm -hmm. easily digestible, like oatmeal or a bagel, um, -hmm. try to stay away from the high fiber stuff. And this is the time to pull out your whole wheat products, right? Mm -hmm. You want to stick to like the white starchy stuff. Um, but if it's something shorter than that, then most folks can get away with kind of a piece of fruit. Mm-hmm. Yes, Okay. exactly. All right. Nice. And then the other thing that I've heard about as well, right? This is not the time that you want to load up on protein or fat for that matter, right? right? Yes. Yes. After, after is where protein is most important. Okay, nice. And I guess that's a probably a good segue to, um, you know, we do have a good amount of like plant-based runners in our community. And, um, you know, what are your go-tos for 
um, protein. So as you mentioned, you know, after your run, that's the most important time our muscles are rebuilding. Yes. Protein is the building blocks of our muscles. And that's how we need to kind of help those muscles recover. So they can recover, grow and be able to run for our next yes. runs. Um, so what are some of your go to kind of plant based sources for protein? Yes. So probably one of my favorites is chickpeas and tofu. Um, but there's tepeh, satan, um, quinoa even has a good source of protein. Um, so there's a lot of things that sometimes people don't even like think about. And they're like, oh, that has protein. And, and it does. Um, so yeah, those are some that I can think of. Beans, lentils, any of your beans, you know, black beans, white beans, kidney beans, um, black eyed peas, all of those. Um, lentils are also popular as well. A good source of protein. Nice. So a lot of your beans, basically um mm -hmm. chickpeas okay all right nice mm -hmm. uh tofu obviously um mm -hmm. and there are ways you can like flavor up tofu right because tofu plain yes. is not probably <laughs> the best tasting uh, no. so do you like spice yes. up your tofu or do you have i do i do yeah i season mine i have this garlic and herb seasoning that i've been using that's really good on it and i'll add nutritional yeast and garlic powder and just kind of season it up um, and then I've also have done barbecue tofu as well, which is pretty good. Ooh, I haven't heard that one yet. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Barbecue so you tofu. Can, you can fix tofu just like you would chicken. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. It sounds yeah. like, like when people say it sounds just like, it tastes just like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Um, so for those of you who are here, um, so everyone is chiming in kind of that tragedy did happen in China. Um, yeah, okay. I did. I, I do remember China. that. Um, where, and these were like experienced ultra marathoners too. Yes. Um, yeah. so it's not like these guys were beginners awesome. or anything like that. So definitely mm -hmm. a huge tragedy. Um, so guys, what questions do you have for Kayla, um, with regard to hydration, nutrition? Um, I kind of asked some of my things that I was wondering myself, um, and I guess while we're waiting for some people to chime in here, so we talked about protein after we talked about what to eat before, um, what are your go-tos for during your run? What do you like to fuel mm -hmm. with? Um, or actually the other thing we should yeah. talk about actually is electrolytes as well. Yes. Um, can, let's do that yeah. first, actually. So okay. electrolytes, just because of all the sweaty runs we're going to be doing, Yes. Right. This is the most important time to be using your electrolytes, right? Yes. Versus those Absolutely. cold weather runs. Yes. And not just water. <laughs> you need electrolytes. Okay. Yes. Now, is there yes. like a general rule that you give your clients on like how much they should be using or yes. what types of products or um, sources that they should be using? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I recommend for long runs. 16 to at least 16 to 20 ounces before, even before a race, you know, start sipping on that two hours, even before your race, sip on those electrolytes. Um, and then also during should be 16 ounces every 15 minutes. And I know for a lot of people that can seem like, Whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> and this is why most of us are, you know, pretty dehydrated or losing fluid, uh, after our runs. Um, so what I recommend, and this is what I do myself as well, is I take a hydration pack with me and I just sip and a lot of ultra marathoners will use those, but I think it's great also for marathon training is just to, you know, be able to sip on those, sip on electrolytes all through your run. Uh, especially if you're somebody that's like, well, I can't drink that much and just keep running. You know, I'd feel the fluid in the water in my, in my stomach. So, um, I, I do think it, it works really well sipping it throughout that can really help. Um, and then what, Oh, and then you asked about products. So some of my favorite or some of my products that a lot of my athletes like, and I also recommend is noon tablets. Those work really well because you can just, they're very travelable. You know, you could travel with them. You could just throw them in your water pretty easy. And then there's some powder ones as well. Tailwind I know is a popular one. MLNT I think is another one. Um, but there's, um, what else do I, oh, I've also used the Huma, the Huma brand as well. And I also used Huma gels. There's, those are my favorite because those gels are made out of chia. So they're vegan, natural, 
all of that stuff because they're made out of chia seeds. Nice. And then I, I guess I'll mention the one that I've always used um, and is a sponsor of our pro- <laughs> podcast is you can, uh, they have a hydrate, you can hydrate, which is just straight up electrolytes, no sugar in it. So that's what I've used really since that company actually started, they were a company founded in Connecticut and now they're, you know, international. Um, but yes, they also make an electrolyte uh, product as well. And those of you in our community, you can get 20% off if you use code healthy runner at checkout at you can's uh, website. Um, so that those are, you know, what myself and some of our other runners in like our training group um, use, but yeah, those could be helpful. And is that true? Cause I've heard that a couple of other places of even for like our water or electrolytes, if we're sipping it, smaller sips is better than like gulps, like, you know, downing a whole cup of water, like during your race is a little bit, it's better to kind of sip slowly as you go throughout more frequently versus like, downing two cups, let's say you only stop at like two water stops, right? Like your whole half yeah. marathon, let's say, um, is that, is that true? Yes, I think, I think so because of, you know, just that GI component, you know, a lot of people will complain of having GI issues and they're like, well, I can't take hydration or I can't drink during my run. And I think a lot of it has to do with those GI issues. So I do think sipping it can really help that and prevent that from just yeah, that kind of feeling like something's in your belly and your stomach, right? Jumping up and down. Okay. Good point. Good point. Awesome. Uh, so Aubrey has a question. She wants to know, is there a specific amount of protein we should have after a run? Yes, there is. So it depends on body weight. I feel like a lot of things depend on body weight. It all kind of depends, but there is a way to figure it out. So it's 0.25 grams per kilogram of your body weight per hour of exercise, I believe. Okay. Can you just repeat that one more time? Sorry, I missed that. (laughs) Yes. So 0.25 grams per body weight or per kilograms of body weight per hour. Okay. Per hour. All right. So again, that's requiring me to do math, which we all know yes. that I'm not great at. <laughs> so coach Lou, you are like our analytics genius. You're going to have to like do some math in the comment box for us and give <laughs> us like a real life example for like a 200 pound, uh, male or like a hundred and I don't know, 40 pound female, what that amounts to, like how many grams of protein. I, I bet you Lou can do this, uh, awesome. in like two minutes. Um, <laughs> awesome. so uh, Melissa also gives a little shout out to noon, uh, that she, she loves those products. Um, and Nivian says she likes both the, you can, and the noon tablets as well. Um, and then Ruth has a question regarding calf muscle cramps in hot and humid weather. Is that a side of dehydration? It could be. Yes. Most likely it's related to low potassium or magnesium. So one thing too about electrolytes that I didn't specify either is a lot of people think when we're talking about electrolytes that it's just sodium. Well, the thing is electrolytes like Noon, like Talon, like you can, they have all three electrolytes. So they have sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And those are very important for, to prevent cramping as well, which we didn't talk about, but yes, those electrolytes are also needed to prevent cramping in those type of issues. Yeah. So a lot of that, like the classic is the marathon, right. And like mile 20, like people cramping up, like I did for mine. Um, (laughs) so a lot of that is related to potassium is what you're saying. Um, okay. All right. And then do you usually recommend like salt tabs or the salt sticks for folks in addition to electrolytes? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So taking, See, I usually take two salt pills and my 16 ounces of electrolytes before a long run. Wow. Okay. So you do that all before and nothing during? During? Yes. So if I, if I run for over an hour, I will do a salt pill like every hour. Ooh. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you tell me because you're the expert, but when I did run my marathon, it was like the weirdest thing where I had like salt all over my body. It was like a white coat 
of, and it was all over my face. Like it was all salty. And then wow. I looked at my shoulders and it was like these white. And I was like, what is it? Cause it's never happened to me ever before. Um, except for the marathon. Yeah. Um, is that like just sodium leaving my body essentially through my skin, it, you know, most likely. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's why your skin tastes salty. Like your sweat will taste salty. Like I could lick my skin sometimes. And I'm like, Oh, I'm really salty. And that's because yes, you're losing sodium, which is why we need to replace. So okay. Yeah. So I think that was my huge downfall when I did the marathon, because I didn't know about salt yeah. pills and taps. So for mm -hmm. those first yeah. time marathoners, They're a game changer. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely really recommend, <laughs> you know, making sure you take those with you and you prepare beforehand and don't make the common mistakes. And, and then when you're seeing yes. folks like myself and my legs like literally were locked and couldn't bend at all at my oh. ankles or knees uh, for six miles hobbling through those last six miles you know you can kind of like <laughs> smile at them or be like oh i'm sorry or here take a salt <laughs> tab <laughs> maybe if you have some extra on you <laughs> you could throw yeah. it to like your neighbor um be like a good samaritan uh during the race yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's get to uh, back to the comments here. So Javier is wondering within what time frame should you eat after a run, um, especially protein? So is there an optimal mm. window of opportunity, essentially, that, that we should be eating after these long runs or maybe like some of these longer distance races, whether it's a half or a full mm -hmm. marathon? Yes. Yeah. So within 45 minutes to an hour, is the recommended amount of time to get that protein in so you can have the fastest recovery to your muscles. Now, with that said, you still want to do that, but you do have a two hour window if you're not able to have like a well balanced meal, you know, with carbohydrates, protein, healthy fats, all of that stuff. You, you know, you do have time, but it is good, you know, still within that 45 to an hour, 45 minutes an hour to still try to get some protein in for your muscles. Okay. And I know that's sometimes difficult for folks because a lot of times you're not really necessarily hungry, yes. right? Like after you, especially the hot one runs, right? Yes. Cause you're like <laughs> just so overheated and you just want to cool down and you yes. know, you don't feel like eating when you're no. feel so hot. Right. Um, but just realize that it yeah. will help your body recover, even if yeah. you can get in um, some nutrition after your run, you know, maybe try to stick to the bland types of foods. Um, yes. Like for me, you know, a banana is usually something easy that I can get in um, yeah. after these runs or some fruit. Um, and that's when you do want to get more like the simple sugars, right? So of fruit versus like the long acting initially, and then maybe after, yeah. like within an hour or two, get in your complex carbs? Mm -hmm. I mean, not maybe not necessarily, but I guess I always think afterwards, just protein, protein, but yeah, carbs are still, still important. And then what I always recommend is I know a lot of people, especially the athletes, at least I work with are more whole food plant-based, but I still do recommend them like after a race, if they're not able, if there's not protein sources that you could have or you know, you're just not hungry afterwards, take that. Pro that's a time when protein powder is actually really beneficial for us as runners. And that's a time, you know, I don't recommend to have that every day, but it is something that in that case is really helpful to have. Cause if you bring, you know, your protein powder with you in your bottle, usually you always get water after the race. You can always just throw water in there, shake it up, boom, get that down. At least you get some protein down, you know, before you can go have a, a really good meal to recover. Yeah. That's what I always do for every single race. I definitely bring a little lunch bag with a, you know, ice pack in it. I have a drink of electrolytes in there and I have my protein, um, in there as well as even an extra banana in case I need one. Um, <laughs> and I even did that yesterday for my long run because it was the first time that I ran 12 in a while and it, it, I ran it nice and slow. And so I was out there for like two hours. So even, you know, we kind of talk after our, our group long run, you know, everyone chats and everything. Um, mm -hmm. so it, you know, I was probably there for about 45 minutes. So I know by the time I drive home, so I, I had something ready to go in the car for my drive home to help try yeah. to, you know, replenish, right. And start yes. to recover, um, from that long run. So definitely for races guys, again, for, you know, novices is your first, second, whatever half marathon, full marathon pre preparations key, 
right? And if you oh, can yes. have these things, because mm-hmm. you never know what's going to be really available post race as well. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So it's always good to have your own stuff on hand. And then you see what they have. If you don't need your stuff, then that's fine, right? You just bring it mm-hmm. home with you. Um, okay. and you can have it the next day or so. Um, so I think that's definitely helpful. Yeah. So before we get into our final stretch, those of you we're going to be wrapping up. So if you want to ask Kayla any uh, last questions, mm-hmm. this is your opportunity. We got a registered dietitian, nutritionist here to answer your questions. Um, so my question to you, Kayla, is if you can change one thing about the misconception about fueling and hydration for warm weather races, what would that be? Ooh, I'd say do more than just water. <laughs> You really do need more than just water. And a lot of, I feel like my coach always reminds me this even to me as well, because sometimes water is just easier, right? When I don't plan. And then, you know, he's always like, where's your electrolytes? I'm like, yeah, I know this, but I don't do it myself either because it's just more planning, right? On your part, but you really do need more than just water. And I can't tell you how much important it is because I've even done it myself. As I said, I've gone out on a 12 mile run and in hot weather and didn't, you know, didn't have either any fluid or just had water. And then I've gone on runs where I've had electrolytes, had my salt pills, did everything right. And I just felt amazing. Like I was like, wow, that was like the best long run I've ever had in like a really long time, (laughs) but it really does make a difference. All right. So do more than just water guys, make sure you think about your electrolytes. Like Kayla talked about, uh, think about salt tabs. Um, if you haven't, and you're out there for multiple hours, um, for your long runs, especially in the heat where you're going to be sweating a lot. And as I'm taking a, a swig of my water, no, this is not a uh, beer that I have in my hand. I know I have a a keg cup here. (laughs) Um, I'm not playing beer pong, uh, in the background, but I feel like I need an explanation. We're going through a kitchen remodel right now. So for those of you who want to see a 1950 style kitchen, uh, check out the spark your training, uh, Instagram page (laughs) and check out the pictures of the kitchen. My wife and I have been living, uh, with for the last 16 years. Um, so we are excited to finally get that remodeled and update it to the 21st century here. Um, but yeah, we don't have glasses. So I have been uh, drinking out of solo cups and using uh, paper plates. So not the best for the environment, but unfortunately that's how we're going to survive these next, uh, four <laughs> weeks, hopefully fingers crossed. It's only four weeks. Um, but we're, we're confident that, uh, they can deliver this in four weeks. Um, so, and as I mentioned, you know, coach Lou is phenomenal. So he's just stepping up his game. Like he always does. So coach Lou is saying (laughs) 0.25 grams of protein per kilogram per hour. So that's one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. So for someone who is 220 pounds, it's going to be 220 divided by 2.2 times 0.25, which equals, here we go. This is all (laughs) what anyone cares about 25 grams of protein. So essentially if you are 220 pounds, um, and basically if you're out there for an hour, then you should be taking in 25 grams of protein. So there's your calculation, Coach Lou coming through like always. Um, He's the man, (laughs) the myth, the legend. Um, And Annie also says that uh, she drinks a protein, protein powder shake mixed with berries and veggies and eats peanut butter, whole sandwich. Is that okay? Um, So I think she's asking for post race or post run, post long run. Um, So she's basically taking a protein powder that has some mixed berries in it, some veggies, And then she has a peanut butter uh, sandwich. What are your thoughts, Kayla? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. As long as they're getting protein and carbohydrates after you're on, because that's what you're using, using up. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, So thank you so much for asking that. So for those of you who are just tuning into the live, by the way, um, we covered some great, great stuff. So you're going to want to go back, watch the replay of this. Um, Kayla really shared like why it's important for us to fuel and hydration in the hot summer heat to begin with. Um, She talked about the sweat test and what it actually is. So she really clarified that on how we actually conduct the sweat test to know how much we're sweating during our runs because it varies for every runner and it will vary depending upon your weather conditions uh, for your runs. And then we talked about um, really things to eat before your run, 
things to eat after your run, especially some good plant-based because that's um, Kayla's niche here is plant-based kind of fueling and nutrition for runners. Um, and we had a great discussion in, in terms of electrolytes, salt tabs. So we covered a lot in this. So if you missed any of that, definitely go back, check it out. Kayla, I'm sure there's going to be many runners who learned something today and would like to learn more about how you work with runners. Where can our healthy runner community connect with you? Yes. So I do have a Facebook group myself as well. It's called the Plant-Based Performance Running Community. Um, my website is plantbasedperformancenutrition.com. And you can also find me on Instagram at plantbased underscore performance underscore RD. <laughs> nice. And we will certainly drop all of those links in the show notes on the podcast or on the Spark Your Training YouTube channel. Um, so you can find uh, Kayla on all those channels, whichever is your preferred method uh, to get your content. Um, guys, if you found this talk helpful, please hit the like, hit the love button, give Kayla some hearts, uh, let her know that we appreciate her taking the time out of her busy day um, to help share some of her knowledge with us so we can stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running. Um, so thank you so much again, Kayla. This was so informative. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And thank you for those that jumped on here on the live, listened on the podcast, or watched this on our Spark Your Training YouTube channel. Remember, every week we go live within the Healthy Runner Facebook group. So just check out the events tabs to find out what guests and what topics we're going to be covering uh, in the weeks ahead. Next week, we have the topic of running mindset with our very own Coach Latoya. This is going to be a good one. I know she's going to bring the fire uh, like she always does. So guys, thanks again. And remember, stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running. Until next time.